Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna look at Grasshopper's geometry pipeline and I'll show you exactly how to use it. Let's get started. Hi guys, I'm Azhar. Welcome back to another tutorial. If this is your first time and you want to learn Rhino and Grasshopper, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button. And also there's a download link there as well where you can download the file so you can follow along with any of our videos. A lot of Grasshopper users that I talk to don't even know what the geometry pipeline is. So in this video, I really want to show you how great of an input method this can be for you know improving your workflow. So let me show you how to use it. Let's get started. So I have a Rhino file over here where essentially there's this rectangle with a group of points in there. And if I reference these points, it should create these randomized Voronoi forms. Let's see how that works. If I come over here to the left hand side in my grasshopper definition, right click, set multiple points on this point input here, and just go ahead and select these points that are on the screen and then hit enter. Those points get referenced into this component and then they populate uh, and you know, flow through the rest of the script, which generates these uh, kind of forms. And actually, if um, let's see, if I move this over here, go to perspective view, uh, you kind of see what it's doing is creating these random shapes over here. And of course, if I select one of those points and move it, you know, it's going to adjust uh, everything that's going on in here, since it's all parametric, right? This is the goal of a parametric model. Um, you guys who have used Grasshopper before pretty much have seen uh, how this kind of works. So I'm not going to delve too much time over there. I really want to delve most of my time in that top view. Okay. Seeing how this is going to work in the top view. Um, what's going on over here? Why is it not? There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's see. Yeah. Just keep it in a wireframe mode just so that we can see the points. And of course, here's the thing, right? If I'm working on this as a design project, most likely what I'm going to do is definitely add some more points. Like I'm going to say, Oh, what if I added a point here? What if I added a point here or here? Notice that when I add those points, they're here, they're in Rhino, but nothing happens in Grasshopper, right? And that's because that's the problem with these type of inputs is that once you place a geometry in there, once you reference it from Rhino the first time, that's what it's going to remember. No matter what you do afterwards, there's no direct live link between any new geometry and what's happening here. Also, if I delete an existing piece of geometry, notice that just kind of goes away, right? Uh, and then this shows an error. Now there's a null in there. It's like I used to reference a point there. Now there's no point there. So what's going on? So just be aware that these type of things happen over here. So wouldn't it be great if there was a point component here? Uh, except every time I added a point, it automatically added it in there. Or if I deleted it, it wouldn't give me an error. That would be awesome, right? Well, that's exactly what the geometry pipeline is. So let's go ahead and open that up. Geometry pipeline. There it is. Okay. And it's a component that looks like this. Let me get us a little more room here. There we go. So it looks like this and it seems uh, you know, a little complicated, right? So don't worry, let me break this down for you. Basically what the geometry pipeline is, is it can take anything that's in Rhino and bring it straight into Grasshopper without you really have to clicking anything in your Rhino side. Let me show you what I mean. If I look down here under type, you see that there's a point symbol, a curve, a B rep and a mesh. So let's just say I double click this. And so it won't be green anymore. It'll turn sorry, it won't be gray anymore. It'll turn green instead. If I double click curve, let's see what comes out of here. And if I open up a panel, you'll see that it says reference polyline curve. It's like, wait, what is it referencing? I didn't even select anything. Well, what it does is it searches through your entire Rhino model and finds every curve that's there because I double click curve. And this curve right here is actually what's being referenced. Okay. So if I, uh, you know, redline it, for example, this is one of my components, just to highlight things, you'll see that it highlights this red border. So that's what it's picked up right now. So, okay, let's see if I un select the curve, if I double click that now that's not selected and I double click this X instead, it's going to select all the points in my model. Now you'll notice that it's selected a lot more points than I actually have, right? You can see here's a point that I have in my Rhino. There's no point here. So why is it showing that selected something here? Just keep in mind that the geometry pipeline will look through your entire model. So for example, I have a layer here called points two with blue points and a layer here, another one called points one with green points. It's going through the entire model, whether the layer is on or not, whether the objects are hidden or visible, 
it's going to search through. It's going to find them and select them. So just be careful. It's not just going to select things that are visible to you. It's going to select them whether they are on hidden layers or not. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Here I've selected everything. And now if I bring this into this model, Okay, let's see what happens. So instead of this point component, I'm replacing it with the geometry pipeline. And you'll see that it's repopulated it, right, using everything from the geometry pipeline. And of course, this is still parametric. I can still move these points around, and it's going to affect this model, right? So this is working just fine. Now, this may be great, but in very few situations is everything every point in your model relative to a grasshopper script or every curve relative, right? It's probably on a specific layer somewhere. So let's say we only wanted the points on this layer called points two. Okay, so in order to do that, you actually have an extra layer filtering over here. Uh, so you can filter by layer or filter by name. I'll show you each one. So filtering by layer, all you do is double click and in front of this little uh, you know, star symbol, this asterisk over here, what you want to do is just type in the layer that you want to use. So I'll say points two, click the check mark, and now only the blue points, which is the points on this layer, are going to affect the geometry. Notice if I move the blue points, it helps. If I move the red points, nothing happens. If I move the green points, nothing happens. Because it's only looking for points on this layer called points two. I can, of course, change this. If I double click this and make this points one, you will find everything on the points one layer. Now, just be careful. There are two layers called points one. There's one here, and then there's a layer called copy, and its sub layer is also called points one. In this case, the geometry pipeline will search for both. Okay. Um, it all, this happens in very rare cases, but just in case you wanted to select only this one, which is under the word copy, right? In that case, what you'd want to do is something like this. You would just type in the word copy. You'd put two uh, double quotations in there and then hit the green check mark. And this is how Grasshopper would know that, oh, you're looking for this layer points one, but it has to be under this parent layer called copy. And now it's only referencing the green. Um, these red points, which are also on point one, if I move them around, nothing happens anymore. It only gets affected by the green points. That's all that's being referenced. So. Uh, if you ever need that, that's useful. But if you don't, that's okay. You can just remove that. And let's just go back to points one, where it's selecting everything on uh, this layer and this layer. Now, let's say you just want to select everything that's on a layer that starts with the name points. I want to select everything on this layer, this layer called points two, this one, maybe there's 15 other layers, and they all have the word point in front of them. Well, all you do is replace this one with a hash like that, okay? And what it does is it'll look for any layers that have the name points and then a number followed with the word points. So for example, points one, points two, points one again. So all of them get referenced one more time. Of course, if I change this to points uh, B, it will not reference them, okay? Because it's only going to look for a number. And if you hover over this component, they do give you some more information under there. So that's primarily how I've used the geometry pipeline. The only other way I've used the geometry pipeline is by using a name. I'll show you what a name means in a second. Let me just reset this first by double clicking, removing this name. So all that's left is the, you know, the asterisk here. Click the green check mark and now reset this. Let's come back over here and select any point and go to its properties and you'll see that it has a name and the name is empty. In fact, this is true for any geometry. I can uh, you know, just make a circle over here, select the circle, it has a name area that I can actually in input any kind of name that I want to give it. This is really useful, uh, you know, when you're working with like a CAD file or something, you, you can, instead of using the layers, you can also add additional information using the name. Also with structural files, uh, when I'm working on structural engineering projects, um, it's really useful to label some of the wireframe geometry by maybe the section profile or what kind of load case that belongs to. You know, there are uh, things that there are ways that you can use this name area. Right now, what I'm going to do is just select some random points. Okay, completely random. Okay, I really don't care what layer these points are on. I'm going to change their name and change this to I don't know Voronoi point V O R O N O I P T. Okay, copy that. Okay, I'm just going to copy that over here. And now all those points have their name changed. Uh, there we go. Here's one of them. Okay. Now, if I only want to select 
points with that name, then I go ahead and put that name over here, Voronoi Point, and now you see only select points that have that name. It doesn't matter what layer they're on. Now you could of course specify they have to be on points one and they have to have the name Voronoi Point. That's possible, but um, you know that's a little bit of overkill. But in most cases, you'll either be using the geometry pipeline by name or by layer, most likely by layer. And now you guys know how to do that. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, I take requests. If you guys have any projects you want tutorials on or something is getting you stuck, just go ahead, send a, you know, just put a comment under this video here or send me an email at info at And I'll see you guys in the next video.